So I, I echo the sentiments of our Senate president. We were having a little bit of uh, some ladies talk and the wind is just not gonna let our hair be great today at all. I wish I had a hairpin or a ponytail, but we're gonna manage because that's what phenomenal women do. We manage. So a pleasant good morning and welcome to what I like to call a celebration. We are indeed celebrating an accomplishment here today as we cut the ribbon to officially commemorate the opening of the Veterans Drive Phase 1 Roadway Project. My name is Shayla Solomon and I am honored to serve as your mistress of ceremonies for this occasion. Now your program, each of you should have a program booklet, highlights the timeline and history of this segment of downtown Charlotte Amali. We have come a long way and we continue to see tremendous progress made under the Brian Roach administration. And we can clap for that and I'll, I'll repeat that line. We have come a long way and indeed continue to see progress being made under the Brian Roach administration. So we thank all of you for joining us here today. And for those of you viewing the live stream, we say thank you. And we are truly grateful for each and every one who helped to make this roadway development a reality. The wind is indeed great today. At this time, I would like to acknowledge our distinguished platform guests, the Governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, the Honorable Albert Bryan Jr. We have the President of the 34th Legislature of the Virgin Islands and today Acting Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable Donna Fred Gregory. And I'd like to recognize all senators here present today. I'd also like to recognize our commissioner of the Department of Public Works, the Honorable Derek Gabriel. And all members of the governor's cabinet, our distinguished commissioners and directors. Today, I would like to recognize, of course, a program is not a program without our songstress from the island of St. John. So our St. John administrator, Mrs. Shakima jones Sprout. I'd also like to recognize our St. Thomas Water Island administrator, Mr. Avery Lewis, and other members of the governor's senior staff. I'd like to recognize members of the clergy and also Mr. Jamie Christian of the Federal Highway Administration and Mr. Justin Berglin of the American Bridge Company. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in standing for the National Anthem and Virgin Islands March, and that will be sung by St. John Administrator Mrs. Jones Sprout, and please remain standing for the invocation by Reverend Monroe's. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the round parts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang the bombers in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there oh I'll say it does that star spangled banner yet oh the land of the free Virgin Islands, 
Islands, emeralds of the sea, where beaches bright with coral sands and trade winds bless our native lands. All hail a virgin islands, bathed waters blue. We give our loyalty full to thee and pledge allegiance forever true. God bless. A virgin islands, humbly now we pray, where all mankind can join today in friendly warmth of work and play. So God blessed a virgin islands where beautiful and tall beneath the sunny skies hilltop high all out of welcome for one Shall we go to God in prayer? Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the God keeps watch in vain. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, the world and those who live in it, you who accomplish all things, you are worthy to receive praise and glory honor and thanksgiving for the good works you have done among us through past and present governments. On this beautiful day that we have made, we gather together as a community, as, an, as a territory, on this historic occasion to witness and to celebrate this great accomplishment, the completion of phase one of the Veteran Drive Im Improvement Project by the government of the U.S. Virgin Islands under the stewardship of the Virgin Islands Department of Public Works, whose mandate is to plan, construct, maintain our public infrastructure. On this historic day, we affirm that you are our God and that your steadfast love for us as a people, as a territory, and as a nation never ceases. Great indeed is your faithfulness. We pray for your continued blessing upon our territory and our leaders, and upon all who make and administer our traffic law, so that the highest of standards are set and maintained to ensure the safety of all who travel the network of our world system for work and pleasure. We pray for all drivers of vehicles that they may exercise due caution and care so that lives and property may be protected and preserved. We pray for all pedestrians who will traverse our woods, that they will be attentive to their surroundings and act responsibly. May we all be alert of our responsibility one to another. O oh, protecting God, be among us in this morning hour to bless us and to guide us as we go through these proceedings. This we pray through Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all praise and glory, honor and thanksgiving, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen.
Thank you. Yes, it was on. It was on. Thank you so much, our St. John Administrator, Mrs. Shakima jones Sproul, for the anthems and Reverend Morose for the invocation. As we continue in our program, we'd like to call to the podium for his welcome remarks, our Commissioner of the Department of Public Works, the Honorable Derek Gabriel. Good morning. Good morning, Governor Bryan, Madam Senate President, and Acting Lieutenant Governor. Donna Fred Gregory, all other members of the legislature, past and present in attendance, our Reverend Clergy, fellow cabinet members, my DPW family, fellow Virgin Islanders, and every single person who worked on this project. Welcome. It gives me great pleasure this morning to welcome you to this extraordinary occasion as we cut the ribbon on phase one of the Veterans Drive Rehabilitation Project. Before I go too much further, I would like to recognize the veterans in attendance and thank you for the ultimate sacrifice to preserve and defend our freedoms. In 1958, Resolution 93 named this road in your honor and rest assured, I, can, I believe I can speak for all of us that this highway will remain named in your honor as we can never repay you for the sacrifices you have and will continue to make. I ask our former Director of Veterans Affairs, Mr. Patrick Farrell, to join us today. And I ask you to stand as well as any other veteran in attendance as you deserve all of the recognition for today's events. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This project was designed to enhance and strengthen the existing Veterans Drive Highway which serves as the gateway to downtown Charlotte Amali from both the east and the west. For many reasons, I see this project as a strong symbol in our territory. It symbolizes and shows that when the executive and legislative branches of government work together, anything, and I mean anything, is possible. This project would not have been possible without Act 7754, the enabling legislation for the Garvey bonds for this project passed in the 31st legislature. At just over $46 million to date, it is the largest project funded by Garvey bond issuance. Senators, both past and present, please take a moment to stand and be recognized for your important role in funding this project. Thank you. It also symbolizes a strong and growing relationship between the Department of Public Works and the Federal Highway Administration. Currently, the department has 18 active projects in conjunction with the Federal Highway Administration. I ask Mr. Jamie Christian to join us today on behalf of Federal Highway Administration. Jamie, I truly appreciate the relationship our two entities enjoy, and I look forward to more success in the years to come. A special recognition to Eastern Federal Lands Highway Division for their consistent role of project delivery from procurement through construction administration while serving as a project manager. Mr. Victor Carreras, who is representing Eastern Federal Lands le Leadership, and Jamie, please stand and be recognized for your contributions on behalf of Federal Highway and Eastern Federal Lands. <laughs> Finally, this project symbolizes the territory's transformation as our recovery efforts are in full swing. Just this year alone, we finalized the revitalization of our Commerce Corridor as we cut the ribbon on the Main Street project. And now, we celebrate the first phase of the rehabilitation of the gateway to downtown Charles Amali. Everyone here should be truly proud of this amazing achievement. I want to take a few moments, as most of you know, this project has a very, very, very long history. So I want to take a few moments to recognize some key individuals, and I do see our corporate partners, Oriental, as well as MLB Creative, so I thank you for the wonderful lighting project. I appreciate you guys. But I want to take a few moments to recognize some individuals who have been important throughout the life of this project. Juridian Design Group, particularly Mr. John Woods. I don't see Mr. Woods here today, but where is he? Oh, there you go. Mr. Woods, I personally want to recognize and thank you for your immense contributions to the downtown revitalization efforts. Your footprints, or excuse me, your fingerprints will be forever etched in our downtown, and I am proud to call you a fellow Savanero. Thank you for your calls, 
your emails, and your undying commitment to this territory. I also thank your staff who we actually have someone who worked with you on the project and then came to work with us to finalize it, Mr. Kenny Benjamin. I appreciate you and everything that you continue to do. <laughs> WSP, you have been with the department through the design phase and in, you have been the department's design and engineering partner since the project's inception and will remain with us through phase two. Thank you for your hard work and your commitment to this territory. I also invited employees from our, our, the department's employees of the year from each district to attend the ceremony. While I am the person standing before you today, this project is representative of each member of this department's commitment to public service. Each of us working at the department, no matter the district, share a high level of pride and I wanted to make sure you see the members, you, you see the members of this department that are responsible and recognize them for their hard work, dedication and service. With every member of the Department of Public Works, especially my employee of the year in the back, Mr. Tulu Green, I don't see Mr. Julian Amoroso, but would you just please stand so they can see each and every one of you that are committed to their work each day. <laughs> Again, this project has a long history, and I would simply like to take a moment to recognize several of the past governors that have worked on this project. Of course, Governor John DeYoung, Governor Turnbull, Governor Kenneth Mapp, and of course my boss, Governor Albert Bryan. Thank you for seeing this one to fruition. I personally ask former commissioners Daryl Smalls and Nelson Petty Jr. To, to show up today. I am fortunate enough to call you both friends and colleagues. Daryl, once a project got restarted, you were the driving force behind the design visioning and programming as well as building the necessary momentum to drive a project like this forward. Nelson, you broke ground and presided over most of the construction. On behalf of a grateful community and a grateful department, I thank you both for your invaluable contributions. Please take a moment to stand. I truly feel honored to be a part of this fraternity as a commissioner of public works, so thank you guys. The St. Thomas St. John Chamber of Commerce. This project would never have come to fruition if it weren't for your support for the project. Current Chamber President Shane Gaspard, I want to personally thank you for continuing the spirit of cooperation and collaboration between our organizations. Our Main Street vendors and our entire, and our entire commerce community have exuded the patience of Job over the past years and now that, patient will, that patience will pay off exponentially. Please accept my heartfelt gratitude and my sincere thanks for your cooperation. And I do also see past president of the chamber in the crowd, Mr. Seb Paiwanski, so thank you so much for showing up as well. Our, <laughs> our contractors, American Bridge, you have been an awesome construction partner and you delivered. Thank you. But this project was a project built mostly by Virgin Islanders for Virgin Islanders. I want to recognize the capable local firms that worked tirelessly to deliver this project. Gradal and Eric Castro, Charles Electric, <laughs> Island Roads, and Precise Builders. American Bridge, you should be commended for building, and for, for building a team focused on local Virgin Islanders. Thank you for your commitment to the territory. This project never would have come to fruition weren't it for money. So I want to take a moment to thank the PFA leadership in attendance. Governor Bryan, as the chairman of the board, Commissioner Bruce, the executive director of the PFA, and Director Nathan Simmons, as well as the entire PFA team. As the entity that was responsible for floating the bonds, thank you. The success of the project was worth the headaches. I also want to thank every person that worked on this project in the past. I had an opportunity to talk to Mr. Tyrone Martin, and I thank you for not only sharing the history, but also the tradition of this project. I cannot thank each and every one of you enough. <laughs> Last, but most important, our community at large. You deserve to be recognized for your patience, your trust, and your understanding. I stand before you today as a commissioner of, of public works, but more importantly, as a proud Virgin Islander. Look at what we did. 
This project symbolizes us. Strong, resilient, and transformational. We are capable of being the change we want to see. Thank you all, and welcome once again. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for those remarks. Indeed, a speech about gratitude. I love that you took the time to acknowledge every single person responsible for the project. He did not leave anyone out. You know, we, we can accomplish so much when we work together. Oh, One, we, we, forgot we, we. someone. Oh, I forgot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I need to... <laughs> I have to introduce one of the most important people on this project, although he begged me to stay in the background. Please, Jomo, please stand. Mr. Jomo McLean. My goodness. Jomo, I, have, I cannot thank you enough for everything you do. I cannot thank you enough for seeing this project through and delivering. You of all of us should be most proud. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you for your commitment, your steadfastness, and your dedication. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I just had to do that. This gentleman is the is engineer of the Virgin Islands, so I always have to take a moment to thank him. Fantastic. So what we're going to do now, we have a few individuals that will share some remarks with us. And we have from the Federal Highway Administration, Mr. Jamie Christian, and he will start with our opening remarks. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, and it's a it's an honor to be here. Um, I'm so happy to be part of this celebration. This, this is a huge milestone. And on behalf of the United States Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration, I want to congratulate the governor and Madam President on behalf of the legislature for a job well done. This is, uh, I cover the state of Florida, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands, and this is, this is a major accomplishment. I see a lot of projects, and this is by no means a small feat. Uh, and we've been, as the commissioner mentioned, we've been with this for a long time. We have a strong partnership, and it is, it is just absolutely wonderful to see this uh, wonderful milestone. And I'm looking so forward to seeing the other phases come to fruition as well. I, I do want to mention one other person that's in the audience, Jose David. He's with our Eastern Federal Lands. Can you stand up? Back in the back. He's our... Uh, our person on the ground here and, and works works right here uh, day to day, and, and, a, and he's been with this project for a long time. So this project not only improves safety and congestion for traffic, but it also provides a safe and beautiful place for pedestrians and non-motorized users as well. And that's just as important as, as the traffic. Uh, all, Especially in our current administration, one of our focuses is all users of our roadway. We typically think of drivers, but there's a lot of other users, and this project embodies uh, the values of that. And from an engineering standpoint, uh, this was a very complex project from building the seawall to completing this project under traffic. And this is the main thoroughfare for St. Thomas. So that's no small feat either. So without uh, top quality uh, engineers and contractors from the private sector, uh, we need their partnership as well. And I know the commissioner recognized them, but I wanted to reiterate how important it is to have those high quality uh, contractors and engineers working on our projects. FHWA has enjoyed a long partnership with the Virgin Islands, and we have many more projects to come. As many of you know, with the recent passage of our Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, we have a lot of additional resources in the near future that the Virgin Islands will be able to use uh, for additional projects. Again, this project embodies the goals of our administration to improve quality. These types of projects improve, improve the quality of life for all the citizens and, and the visitors to the Virgin Islands. So once again, congratulations, Governor, on this monumental achievement, and I look forward to our continuing our partnership for the future phases of Veterans Drive. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Christian, for those remarks. And now we will hear from Justin Berglund of the American Bridge Company. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. Um, we uh, started this project four years ago. We were awarded it 
and uh, we just had so many milestones along the way. I can remember three and a half years ago, there was a pump house. There was the first thing we did. We, we demolished it, and that just set the tone for the project. Um, a year and a half ago, we cut the ribbon to uh, drive on the first phase of the project, and here we are today opening the uh, full roadway. It's just been, uh, it's been a privilege to be part of this project. Uh, it's been a privilege to, to see the community um, support it. Every time we drive by, people are just so thankful, and uh, it's just, I've never worked in an area where people have just appreciated the work we've done so much. So uh, that has been very, uh, just very humbling. So it's, um, I've been here for four years. My, my son was six months when we raised him, so he's lived here longer than anywhere else, and it's just been, we call this home for four years, and it's been an honor. It's, uh, it's sad to see it come to an end, but we're looking forward to the next phase, and um, I gotta make a few comments about our local partners because I thought when we cut the ribbon for the first phase back in August of 2019, I thought most of the challenging work was done. And uh, boy, was I wrong. As we came uh, down the road here and in front of the courthouse, we found pipe after pipe, piece of concrete after concrete that just was 100 years old and nobody knew it was there. And uh, Eric Castro, our uh, he was our main subcontractor responsible for <laughs> Eric was instrumental in all the success we've had. Um, every time we ran into a problem, he had a quick solution. Jose David, Jomo McLean, every time we had a problem, these guys jumped right in and uh, helped us resolve it. Um, it's just Jamil Siddiqui with uh, FHWA has been instru instrumental in our success. So it's been a great project with great partners, and um, we're very thankful to have had a part in it. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for those remarks. And now we have for her remarks, our Senate President of the 34th Legislature of the Virgin Islands and Acting Lieutenant Governor. And yes, Lieutenant Governor Roach is at the NAIC uh, fall meeting where we achieved accreditation for our Division of Banking, Insurance, and Financial Regulation. So we are once again glad that we have our Senate President as our Acting Lieutenant Governor today. Make no mistake, I am here as the president of the 34th legislature. Make no mistake. Oh boy. Reverend Morose and Pastor Jeff, Governor Albert Bryan Jr members of the 34th legislature. And I always like to acknowledge my colleagues individually because but for the legislature, many of the projects that we see occurring in the Virgin Islands would not be possible. So bear with me. And if I forget anyone, please raise your hand so I could see you. Uh, of course, I have to acknowledge first my vice president, Senator Novelli Francis Jr. Senator Alma Francis Heiliger, Senator Carla Joseph, Senator Duane M. DeGraff, Senator Janelle K. Saru, Senator Kurt Vailey. I thought I saw Senator Milton Potter, Senator Javon James. Senator Samuel Carillon. Did I miss anyone? I need to take my mask off. It presents progress. It represents, rather, progress. After graduations, ribbon cuttings are my all-time favorite ceremonies to attend, Governor. And this project is considered a collective, collaborative project as indicated by our good commissioner. Thank you for highlighting all of those individuals. There are so many leaders in our territory that participated, that gave their input in this project. 
governors, former legislators, public works commissioners, and we can't forget our federal partners. And of course, we can't forget the men and women of the Department of Public Works. These people came before us and they touched some part of this project. And while many of them are not here today, it is important that we give honor where honor is due. This project, as I indicated earlier, and the wind is taking away my sail, is a fine example of how great things, how great things can happen when leaders pass the baton and the vision is clear. Also notable and worth mentioning about this project is the patience of our community. It seems like every time I speak to one of these events, the wind just blows and blows when it's my turn. And I am not kidding. The same thing happened at Veterans Day. Um, you know, I, I was talking about the members of our community and the fact that, you know, we have to commend them. Because I can't recall, and I don't know if any of you can, one complaint from our community regarding the inconvenience caused by this project. So we have to give them a hand clap for that. Yes. I am sure we will all agree that the inconvenience caused by this construction of this project pales in comparison to the beauty and the benefit it brings to our U.S. Virgin Islands. And yes, I said U.S. Virgin Islands, not only St. Thomas, our U.S. Virgin Islands. We have now extended a four-lane roadway, highway, that will ease congestion that our motorists has faced for decades. This feels like Veterans Day. <laughs> this does feel like Veterans Day. Do you remember, um, former director? Yes, it does. I got wet. <laughs> but this roadway will not only assist with the flow of traffic, it is a beautiful addition. Addition. And now my skirt is flying. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing I have a good sense of humor. I swear. <laughs> But let's get serious. <laughs> this project is a beautiful addition to the downtown landscape of Charlotte Mali. And we have already witnessed, those of us who traverse the road, we, people, folks, exercising, taking leisure walks on the new promenade, or sitting and enjoying the magnificent view. I think I've even seen someone, a, a couple got married here a few months ago. This expansion will be enjoyed by Virgin Islanders that will come long, long after all of us that are sitting here. And you know what? It's a known fact. St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands has the most beautiful port in the Caribbean. And I will venture to see the world. And this expansion definitely places this 32 square mile island on a whole nother level. As this phase in itself is a new tourist attraction. Governor Bryan, Commissioner Gabriel, contractors, architects, of financial folks, engineers, project managers, our highway lead, and the members of the legislature, previous legislatures, the members of the 34th legislature, 
expresses a warm thank you to all of you for seeing this phase to its completion. Now that I have given us, that I have given you a snippet of what to come, that you have given us a snippet of what to come, now you have some bigger shoes to fill, right? Commissioner and Governor, we can't wait. We can't wait to see the next phase of this game-changing project for the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is, in fact, a collective win for all Virgin Islanders. Thank you, and happy holidays. Thank you, Senate President, the Honorable Donna Fred Gregory, for those remarks. And now we're going to call to the podium the Governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, the Honorable Albert Bryan, Jr. Good morning. Thank you, Senate President, for those remarks. Good morning to the clergy. Good morning, Senate President, uh, other uh, cabinet members, dignitaries, everyone who's here. Um, and thank you, Lord, for that blessing. Let me put back on my glasses so I can see. <laughs> when, you know when you're getting old when you got to put on your glasses so you could hear? <laughs> you know, I didn't think about I would be meeting Veterans Drive this way today because, you know, Lately, I've gotten into cycling, so 4.30 this morning, I woke up, and I put on my cycling clothes, put my shoes down, filled my water bottle, got my bike ready, and waited for my good friend, John Ingerman, to come. And as I sat there, I looked outside to see if it was raining. And when I saw 5 o'clock come, and I didn't see John, I thanked the Lord he overslept. <laughs> So I went back to bed. But sleep I couldn't because there were so many things running around in my head about today. And today is a bright day, but it was also kind of a little depressing for me as I sat there and thought because when I originally thought about this, I had a different vision. And I thought to myself, like, why wasn't I able to accomplish what I wanted today? And I, I started to look back at my calendar of the last 90 days like what has happened that had me so distracted. And in the last 90 days, days, we graduated a firefighter class. We graduated two firefighter classes, two police classes, rather. We cut the ribbon to open Megan's Junction for affordable homes. We paid back $19 million in tax credit to families who have children in the Virgin Islands. We paid $50 million in tax returns to people who are long waiting for them. We pay back $40 million of the 8% return to people. We cut the ribbon, sorry, we, we broke ground on the Frederickstead uh, pool. We started reconstruction on the Polly Joseph Stadium. Through the hard work of the legislature, us and the community, we finished a new um, children's playground, Medrick Commons uh, Park, which is beautiful. We paved Frederickstead. We paved about six other communities, including Humbug, St. George. We started a project in Hall Bay and Miss Gunst. We've been to Colorado to talk about cannabis. We've been to the Jacksonville to talk about the harbor dredging. We've cut the ribbon on the battery in St. John, and we finished construction at Government House. Woo! I'm tired, are you? And that's just the tip of the iceberg and the 90 days because that's what I can remember. And I, I got tired at 72. But I wanted to have all the governors here because today is about yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I mean, when you think about projects, I was sitting uh, at, at my good friend Dave Etchcombe's memorial service, which was beautiful, uh, if you missed it, on um, this weekend, talking to Dr. Hall about great things. Like, you know when you want to accomplish great things, when people say, you're crazy, that will never happen, that could never be. And 
we're just seeing the completion of so many great things. I mean, when I came here today, Tyrone Martin handed me this with Governor Snyder and him talking about this in 1986. <laughs> Farrelly talked about this. Louis talked about this. I mean, this project is 40 years old. I was watching Mr. Rogers and the Electric Company when they were doing this stuff. <laughs> it takes that long to do great things, but it also speaks to the perseverance. So sometimes it's like Noah, right? You start building the ark, and people start laughing because they ain't seen it, no water, and you're thousands of miles away from the sea. But you keep building, and you keep building, and eventually it did rain. So I want to take my hat off today to all the Virgin Islanders that made this a reality. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, my God. <laughs> Trigenza really wanted to be here today. We almost... We almost postponed it just because he wanted to speak about not only the how it looks but what it means to the community because an amazing thing has happened since this has been built it has brought our community together and made them a whole lot healthier you could see people walking talking picnicking discussing biking cycling skateboarding you name it uh, i've been seeing the the little aerobics classes out here in the morning. It's a beautiful thing. Never would we have thought that this project would not only have an impact on what we do in terms of the look of how, we, how the St. Thomas is, but it would also have an impact on how people feel about their Virgin Islands. And an incredible job done by the people who did the construction. Think about this. The, from Haven site to Lucinda Millen takes seven years. It started in Turnbull and finished in De Young. Y'all remember that? Seven years from Haven site to this was done in three and a half, four years. Four years. Fantastic job! Give them a round of applause, for me, please. <laughs> I hope you're paying attention, because what we're doing is not random. We're investing in our downtown areas. From the little things you see happening, like the park in Frederickstead, the building of Polly Joseph Stadium, the paving of the roads, the undergrounding of the water, to Christiansted, where we're redoing the key and adding new hotel space, selling the King Christian Hotel and combining it to have a bigger downtown restaurant, supporting the new sewer systems and water lines that are going to go down there and the expansion of the boardwalk around to Gallows Bay, the moving of the cargo from the one side of the island to the next and the development of a world-class marina in that area, the upgrade of, of the Lagoon Park and everything that's going on there, to St. John where we're putting in new bathrooms downtown and doing the hardening of it so that we can have p constant power in St. John. And never again we will have a situation where St. John is landlocked without power and, and resources. Yes. <laughs> to the amazing things we're doing in, in Charlotte and Malia, like creating a downtown hotel in Haven site and finishing this, and yes, turning the corner on Veterans Drive to go around the legislature. <laughs> Not true, around <laughs> the legislature. The Vendors Park, which we're, we've already ordered the new kiosk that we dreamed about for a long time ago, the downtown bathroom, which will be across the street, the complimentary one on the other end of town at Enid Bar, the entire promenade that will be repaired going down, all of the road work and the palms that have been growing. And please, Derek, please put a sign up there, say palm crossing, because a palm them getting knocked down all the time. <laughs> St. Tomians. We know how you ain't custom to drive past 40 miles an hour. Slow down. You got me a little crucial humor for the day. But the work we're doing at the airport with the new rental center and the med school at the university, it's all in the plan to strengthen and to make our tourism product even stronger. Not me alone. We hold hands and shake with the entire legislature and the people of the Virgin Islands as we listen to the wants. Because now we have the ability to realize all the dreams that we only talked about for years and years and years. But we can only do it if we work together. Soon we will be unveiling another big thing, not me alone, us and the legislature. A big step forward for all of us 
here in the Virgin Islands. But we must continue to support, to believe, and most importantly, to work together. Today, I congratulate Virgin Islanders on a whole for the incredible strides we've made over the last couple of years, for our incredible resilience from the recovery from the hurricane, for our perseverance to be and stand fast and make accomplishments even during the pandemic, and to our beautiful tourism product, which is number one today and will remain number one in the Caribbean. Thank you and have a good day. I do want to thank also our community partners in Oriental Bank that's going to make it a nice little white bright Christmas um, going up here by decorating all the palms in partnership with the Office of the Governor and the Tourism Department. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for coming out. Thank you so much, Governor, for those remarks. And now to close things out for us today, we'll have the benediction by Pastor Jeff Neville. Thank you. And uh, Governor Brian, let me add one more to your list because we were together as we broke. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you and all of us peace. Amen. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. That concludes our program, but we will have the official cut-in of the ribbon. And Governor, I do believe this huge scissors is going to be yours. So we're going to go right over to the road itself where we have the blue ribbon. And actually, folks, you can gather a little bit closer if you want any photos. And of course, we're going to need a photo op by the governor's cabinet. So we're just asking for everyone to gather a little bit closer to the ribbon area.